Uh, hello, uh, my name is Marshall Michel. I want to talk today about some work we've done with some of my colleagues, uh, Jesse Hamilton and Annie Wang, uh, where we were looking at the solution for hosts that were located at different locations to be able to talk to one another, uh, uh, but with some constraints on the network, right? Uh, so the reason we, we did it like that is that we have a so we were looking for a solution where we needed direct connection between hosts that were at different locations on firewall, not always connected to the same uh, network stack, right? So we have hosts in the cloud, hosts in the data center, uh, some hosts uh, were working from home, and we even had some uh, some edge device. Uh, that needed to be able to talk to one another. The problem is obviously if you're behind a firewall, uh, you you have to be able to talk on the same layer. Usually you go in through a VPN and then you're connecting to the host. Well, unfortunately here, everybody is behind different uh, layers, so that's not as functional. Uh, overly networks are the, the, the way to go. Uh, because they would create a, a network layer on top of the current uh, network that exists and make everybody accessible on IPs that are predetermined. Uh, there are multiple solutions uh, out there for overlay, overlay networks. Uh, we've looked at a few. Uh, we've you looked at particular at Slack, Nebula, at uh, Internet, and at Tailscale. Uh, they are all mature enough to be uh, usable. Unfortunately, firewalls uh, do their job very well uh, in the sense that uh, if, you have, if you're trying to connect to a host that is behind a firewall, very often uh, you are going to get blocked even if you're the one reaching out uh, to anything that doesn't have a central relay. Um, so uh, uh, that's where actually uh, Tailscale is, uh, was the most functional of the lot. Uh, because it had technology that made it possible for it to relay information through a middle host, right? Uh, it also had a different technology to go through uh, firewalls in order to uh, for packets to be able to uh, to go out. If uh, you're interested, I highly recommend you look at the different blog posts uh, that are out there. I didn't put any here, but there are different blog posts that talk in particular about how Tailscale uh, does connectivity and uh, there are initiatives for the other uh, overly network to work out uh, those solutions. Unfortunately, uh, in the end, for the program we were trying to work on, uh, Tailscale had some components that were closed source, uh, and that made it a little more difficult for us to get uh, to get approval to use them. So we had to look at another solution. Uh, that other solution turned out to be OpenVPN, the classic OpenVPN. Uh, we use the specific implementation of OpenVPN, which is uh, available uh, publicly on uh, on, uh, Docker, on the Docker Hub and on GitHub. And we change a tiny bit how OpenVPN is configured so that uh, we are able to use the client-to-client -client, uh, communication method. Now, client-to-client -client does one thing in particular. It makes it possible for hosts that connect to a VPN to see one another and to talk to one another. Uh, the classic VPN configuration is um, I'm going through the VPN and I can talk to the host behind the VPN, but I cannot talk to the hosts that are connected on the same VPN as I. Well, uh, when you do client to client, uh, that makes it possible for you to actually uh, do that extra layer. So uh, the the uh, this what you see here is basically the steps needed to set up uh, the open VPN. You need a volume for Docker. Uh, once you have a volume, you generate a default configuration. Here it's going to be called open VPN cloud. Uh, it's going to be over UDP. Uh, we are generating a, a default configuration file. And once we have the default configuration file, we are modifying inside the openvpn.com those two lines that you see, topology subnet and client to clients. Uh, then uh, that implementation of OpenVPN uh, makes it possible for you to do authentication using CA. So it's basically the classic OVPN exchange. Uh, so you set up a, a CA passphrase, uh, certificate authorities, of course. Uh, you start the 
uh, up in VPN server, and then uh, you're able to go to uh, the step where you're uh, you're able to create static IPs for each host. And that's actually uh, very important for the pro for some of the projects that we wanted this technology for. Uh, we needed to be able to access hosts uh, and not have we didn't we didn't have a discovery service, right? So we needed to figure out, uh, we needed for every host to always have the same IP. So we did that by uh, 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 configuring it so that a given host would all, always get the same IP. Uh, so here is an example of how to get uh, how to get your CA file as uh, the first two line. You do the same thing on all the hosts you want to connect. Here we have host named server one, server two, home one, and edge one. Uh, user one, sorry, and edge one. Uh, and uh, they're going to be on 10, 20, 30, and 40, right? 192.168.255.10.20.30.40. Uh, then what uh, you you do is you basically uh, connect using an OpenVPN free client. Uh, uh, I think it's, you can't see, but yeah, here we go. Yeah, there is a there was a footnote that was cut off. Uh, you need uh, you need OpenVPN free in order to get to to work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly sh sh uh, share something else. I'm gonna quickly share. I have a Linux VM that I set up just to show you to show you how that works. So I'm gonna share a window with my Linux VM. There we go. No. Okay, so I'm in the Linux VM. I am going to try to ping one of the hosts. As you can see, it's not answering as we're expecting. There is no way for it to reach the private IP. So I'm going to start my, I generated earlier today an open VPN file for myself. Uh, and I'm going to do a one time connection. And I'm connected. Uh, so now if I ping, I can actually ping the host. That host is a, is a GPU box at the data center. Uh, and it's running and it's connected to the server. Uh, so now what I, what I can do is I installed on it a, a Jupyter CUDA DNN TensorFlow OpenCV container. So I'm going to SSH into it. Uh, There we go, and I'm going to run my container. I'm going to grab the token. I'm going to go back here. That was because I was disconnected. I'm going to reload, give it the token. And I have a freshly running Jupyter notebook uh, with a Python kernel. And if I run bash, uh, I can access the commands and show I have four GPUs available to me in that Jupyter notebook, which is running in the data center, uh, remotely accessible, and through the firewall that we have at the data center. Now, of course, you need to be able to SSH into the host uh, for you to be able to uh, to do that. And you can see, I guess I have I have dot two. My configuration is dot two. Uh, I'm going to share back my slides. Sorry. Bear with me. Let's use that one. Uh, for each client, just make sure that uh, you have the right uh, OpenVPL remote setup. Uh, that's kind of important. If, for example, uh, the uh, server is itself beyond, you don't want to expose the, right, the, uh, the default port for OpenVPN, right? Uh, you need to modify the remote on the uh, on the OVPN file. Uh, but beyond that, uh, what we've just achieved is basically this. We've made it possible for all the hosts that are at different locations. So uh, we have tested it with OpenStack instances uh, uh, behind, behind uh, we have tested with OpenStack instances behind the VPN. We've tested it with uh, 
raw host as a data center. We've tested it on AWS. Uh, we've tested it uh, on Edge device. And uh, I'm working from home right now. And I'm at basically just access the data center without being connected to the official data center VPN. If I can talk to every, every one of those hosts uh, currently. Uh, and with that, uh, I want to thank you for your time, and I'm going to welcome questions. Uh, and uh, I, uh, the uh, the information in how to uh, to reproduce that will be made available. Also, we expect in a blog post uh, in the near future.